Okay, I think we're going to get started here. Um, thank you everyone for coming. This is the SEPA neighborhood meeting for the Pump Station 26 Improvements Project. Uh, one of the first things we're going to do before we do introductions is put up a poll um, to get an idea for if you are living within 500 feet of this project. Um, we've got a map on the right side of your screen showing the site in blue in the center uh, and about a 500 foot radius. So that gives you an idea if you live within that range, if you are within that 500 feet or not. Um, okay, introductions. Um, my name is Zachary Evans, and I am the City of Shoreline project manager for this project. Um, I am the one that's kind of um, just managing the project, hiring the consultants, following it from design all the way through construction uh, to stay on budget and get constructed. Um, with us here, we have Cameron Oakletree, who is the lead designer for our uh, civil engineering team that we have hired, and uh, Talia, who is also from BHC and helping us out with our, um, to help this presentation go smoothly. So thank you to both of those two for being here. Um, Moving on, the purpose of this SEPA neighborhood meeting is to simply get um, feedback from the residents and try to incorporate those and mitigate any problems that might come up in design as much as possible. Uh, we are approaching our permit submittal. We're at what we call a 90% design. So, um, you know, if something really big comes up, we can put it in and we can try to mitigate any small requests um, that we can. But we will take your comments and we appreciate them. Um, and we will um, be open to further comment as we go outside of this meeting. Move on to the next meeting. Next slide. Um, okay, start with the existing conditions. Um, this pump station on 185th and 10th Avenue is was built in 1970. It's almost 50 years old or just over 50 years old. It's past its intended life cycle. Uh, the pond area in the back of the site is off limits to the public and has no real benefit to local residents other than its stormwater function. Um, and it's located in a high density area due to the 185th uh, sound transit up zone area. Um, and it contains a bit of a small park, pocket park at the front of the property. Uh, it also has a sanitary sewer lift station on the front end of the property um, that is sharing space as well. Um, and a quick bit of background for this project and why we're doing it. Uh, it detains drainage runoff from a 74 acre basin on the east side of I-5. Um, you can see this red line right here showing the rough boundary of where that drainage basin is the site down here, uh, that's our project location. And so all the runoff from that whole area goes down off your roof, off your driveway, into a catch basin, public storm drainage structure, and ends up all the way at this low point right here at the pump station. Uh, the pump station pumps it uh, down over to on 185th to around 6th Avenue into a gravity drainage structure, which eventually drains up to McAleer Creek. Um, this has been identified in multiple studies for replacement, uh, first in the 2016 condition assessment report, um, showing that both among other, the other pump stations in the city, pump station 26 needs full replacement. Um, and in 2019, we did a follow-up study for all the pump stations, which in addition to um, tightening the recommendations in 2016, uh, further those recommendations on improving the SCADA, uh, and other safety improvements for those pump stations and also prioritized pump station 26 as being the highest priority and most urgent uh, to be replaced among the eight stations in the city. Um, quick talk about funding scope and permits. So uh, funding on this project uh, is primarily from local funds. Uh, we do have a grant from the King County Flood Control District, um, a flood reduction grant of a quarter million dollars. Um, and we are applying for some of the American Recovery Plan Act, um, which was passed in Congress this year, and we are hoping to get that, but it is not final. So the rest will come out of your local funds. Scope for the project, like we said, replace the existing pump station, pumps, and detention storage improve the sidewalk fronting the site and replace the impacted park with a similar park space and amenities. Um, 
This will also be a good place to use some of our 1% for the arts funds on the site. And then permits, uh, we will be applying for a site development permit through the permitting department and a wastewater cap off permit. Quick note on schedule. Um, we are at this gold star right here in the center, right in the kind of more than halfway through design and permitting. We're, at, I think I mentioned before, a 90% design phase, about ready to submit for our permits. Our schedule is to bid and advertise this winter to start construction in earnest at the beginning of the dry season around April of next year. And that construction will probably take about the rest of that year to wrap up. Um, and then in the past, we have the 2016 pump station condition assessment and the 2019, 2020 uh, pre-design report. Both of those are located on the pump station 26 website if you're interested in looking into those for more information. Okay, conceptual design. So just a quick overview of what we're trying to do with this project. A um, Couple of the goals are to move the pump station near the property line for easier maintenance. Uh, the existing pump sat back in the corner of the site, well away from the street. So moving it to the front will be a lot easier to maintain. Um, and also replacing the above ground detention pond with underground detention pipes, which will open up additional park space and also protect um, the surface water from geese, things like that, uh, polluting the, the, the water. Um, and then the existing force main, for now we're going to be um, reconnecting to it, which goes through an easement on private property before it hits 189, excuse me, Northeast 185th. Um, but we're gonna have accommodation so that we can someday move it into the street and abandon that. Um, but not yet. Um, and then also add some pretreatment and other uh, just general upgrades that a new pump station will have. Um, and then here's a picture of the site plan for the um, civil design. Um, so a quick overview of what's going on here. Um, this gray pipe, or excuse me, here's 10th Avenue right here on the east, or the right side of your page. Uh, stormwater will flow in through these pipes into the detention system. There'll be a pretreatment um, structure called a vortex separator or hydrodynamic separator, which will collect as much of the sediment, oil, and garbage uh, as possible for easy maintenance. And then that water will go into these detention tanks, these big eight foot diameter uh, perforated uh, metal pipes uh, with drainage rocks around them that will be able to infiltrate as much as it can to reduce the need for pumping. Um, and then that structure right there is your uh, wet well and pump station. And then that is what we call the valve vault, which has a few, just like it sounds, valves in it. Um, and then it pumps through the force main and connects back to the existing force main right there. And like I mentioned before, um, someday in the future, we hope to switch this elbow around and connect to a new force main in the right of way so we can have full control of that in the public right of way. Um, you can, one more thing you can see on the bottom of this page are some existing trees on the property right next to us. Um, we put a lot of effort into uh, protecting their root zones um, that protrude onto the property. And so that's kind of why the pipes don't extend all the way down to the Southern property line. And then here's just a quick section kind of of what's going on. Um, this would be from looking from the street into the site. You would see um, trees, fence along the back property line, um, lawn area and whatnot, people walking. And then underneath your feet are gonna be these big uh, eight foot detention pipes with permeable gravel around them. And then here's just a quick, um, these are conceptual drawings of something similar to what we're putting in, uh, not actual uh, images of our site, but this is a wet well and a valve vault. So you have pumps right here, water's coming into here from those detention pipes, filling up, um, hitting these little floats that trigger and tell the pumps to run. And it's gonna go up through a couple valves and then out into your force main. And then here's just a quick conceptual drawing of a hydrodynamic separator. Uh, the water comes in, kind of swirls around here, uh, lets some of the debris drop down uh, and then the water, the cleaner water comes out. Okay, so next thing we want to talk about is park and frontage improvements. Um, 
And to start off, I want to quickly recap. I'm sure many of you are aware that this is kind of right in the middle of the 185th um, neighborhood zoning changes. Um, that gold star is our project there on 10th Avenue. Uh, the green we see is MUR 70, mixed use residential 70, that whole area. And uh, light rail station right there. So we're gonna be pretty close to that light rail station and right in the middle of a high density uh, neighborhood. Uh, and then I wanna point out the 185th Street multimodal corridor. Uh, this is a plan for the city that has had a lot of studying behind it. Um, you can find more information on this at, on the website at that link above, which we'll post. <clears throat> and the idea is that this with the up zone and the light rail station is gonna be a corridor that has a lot more pedestrian and bike and bus traffic and we're gonna to wanna to rethink that corridor to um, serve those needs, serve residential, serve the mixed use part of the mixed use zoning uh, better than it currently does. And you can see this section over on the right side is the preferred section for the area in our project. So with this section, our park slash pump station will be on the right side of your page. And so they're showing an eight foot sidewalk, eight foot, uh, flex zone, which might have uh, benches or park benches, things like that, and a uh, planting strip, parking, bike lane, and then your trap lanes. So none of this is happening right now. There's no funding for this construction, uh, but I just wanted to point this out. We did put the curb line in the correct location for these future amenities so we can tie in in the north and the south if those developments do occur in the future. Um, last thing I want to point out on this slide, uh, those red boxes along the corridor are potential future park spaces that the city would hope to acquire. Um, and Rotary Park number four is just right across 185th. 185th. Um, and if it were to ever come to fruition, it would be kind of seen as a adjacent or our park would be kind of a, a side or connected to that in some way. So just an aside on that. Okay, um, this is a street view of our site. Um, if you are familiar with the site, this is what you'll see. You see these, this concrete and these grates and these bollards and that green box, that is the wastewater um, pumping facility right there. So that's gonna stay and we're gonna work around that. Uh, behind it is the park area, We've got a pathway and uh, a couple of park benches. And then in the back you have some, or a fence, which is the closed off portion of the pump station in the back. And here's a site plan. If that street view was standing about right here where my pointer is and looking into the site. So there's that wastewater infrastructure right there. There's your gravel shoulder, park, pump station in the back or excuse me, the pond in the back and the pump station back in the very back right corner there. Um, one thing I wanna point out is that the existing park area that we are removing and trying to replace was about 0 0.1 acre of total area. Our new site area will be about one point, or excuse me, 0 0.32 acres, which is almost tripling in size. So that is, I think, a very good thing. Okay. Here is our proposed park and frontage plan. So I'll start with the frontage improvements to kind of go over those. So here is 10th Avenue Northeast. Here's our wastewater stuff again, um, and our pump station vaults right here. So we have the 16 feet of sidewalk. Uh, in this area, we have the curb line that is matching that future plan. We are not currently making any changes to the uh, travel way painting or where those lanes are. That's a future thing. Um, and we have a ADA pullout space for um, handicapped people to pull out and to get up onto the sidewalk. Um, other minor improvements related to that, a bike lock, some garbage cans. Um, and then going into the site, we have a, a permeable pavement pathway that kind of circulates through the site. Um, that is both primarily for ADA individuals to get into the site, sit down on a bench, enjoy using the park, just like everyone else. Um, 
additional benefit is for maintenance vehicles to get in and park um, without ruining the uh, plantings or the lawn. Um, and then what's next? Um, other park improvements we have. We have, um, like I said, the two benches. Um, we also have what we're calling a stumpery. So we've got some logs that we've, we've pulled down, um, strewn throughout the site. Uh, and what we, some little mounds that we have here that we think will be fun for people to kind of sit and relax on, maybe kids to roll around on. Those are only about two to three feet in height, so not, not too big. Um, other good benefits for the site. Um, we have what's called a 1% for the art requirement. So 1% of the construction costs for this project will be spent on art. And um, because the surface water department does not have a lot of sites that the public can interact, this will be a good place to put a lot of that 1% art funding uh, for all the surface water projects on the site. So in addition to the couple things we're gonna do um, initially, there could be art installations and pedestals placed around this loop in the future. So keep an eye out for that. Right now, we are proposing a Tai Chi wheel and a reflexology path. Uh, working with our arts, arts director, um, we have you know, quite a few people, residents with heritage in the uh, Eastern Asian world. So um, this is kind of an underserved community. And that was one of the ideas in, in adding those two pieces of art. And then surface water educational signage. Um, one other thing we wanted to do was to um, make it take advantage of this surface water site that is in interaction with the public and to try to add signage to kind of educate the public and children about what's going on. We'll have one sign for like the rain garden. We have a small rain garden right here. Another sign for permeable pavement to explain what we're, why we're doing that and how it helps the environment. And then we'll have a couple other signs for just in general, how the detention system works uh, and how that impacts the stream um, downstream of our system and, and how it's all interrelated uh, among other signs. Okay, that kind of uh, encapsulates the overview of the project. So I just want to go over a couple frequently asked questions that came up during the virtual open house. Uh, the first one being what construction impacts are expected, such as dust and impact to gravel shoulders nearby. Um, so this will be, as you said, typical. Um, dust is gonna be on every project to some degree. We do have in our contract to get the contractors to uh, water and to keep dust down. And knowing that we have a daycare nearby, we're gonna be, uh, us and our inspectors will be, uh, on top of that and making sure that dust is limited to the greatest extent possible. Um, impact to shoulders nearby, the ones, the stuff on the east side of the street uh, shouldn't really be impacted too much. Uh, most of the vehicle traffic will be into and out of the site on the west side of the street. Um, and we do have um, the contractor, if they damage anything during construction, will need to come back and clean that up. Um, so if you get to construction, please notify us. If you see something damaged, we may wait till the end of construction to do it all at once if it's not a safety hazard. Uh, so just please um, go ahead and notify us. Um, and then one other tidbit on that. If you uh, live adjacent to the site, uh, right on the east side of the street or one of the neighbors, uh, please, if you can, uh, either in the chat or by messaging me afterwards, please give me your, your contact info and address so that we can be in contact during construction and really um, work with you to make it as least uh, uncomfortable as possible. Uh, amenities at the park, I think I described those decently at the beginning. Uh, I had one comment about hearing about play structures and plug-in uh, for e-bicycles. Um, I don't think that um, that's not included in our proposal. Um, it, there may have been more stuff um, showing on an earlier plan of our uh, project that did not go through. Um, we were hoping to do a little bit more with the park, but that would have required park funding, which um, ended up not happening. Uh, the other alternative is that um, there could have been some of these features included on the parks bond, which uh, came in earlier this year and didn't quite pass with the voters. So maybe that's where uh, the ideas of playgrounds and things 
came from. So fortunately none on our site, but there is some additional yard space where if the parks department wanted to, they could come in and, and add a few things. Um, mitigation about uh, camping and other nuisances. Um, so that is obviously not a part of the engineering department uh, in our and our uh, requirements, but uh, the, the city uh, park staff and police will follow all normal codes and re requirements of the city. Um, one thing the park department did ask us to do in our design is make sure we had really good sight lines into and out of the site. So we designed um, plantings and also structures to make sure there's good visual sight lines into the site so that someone driving by either a park person or a um, police officer can easily assess what's going on in the site without having to get out of their vehicle. Uh, fencing is included on the edge of the site. Um, back on the northwest and south side of the site, we will have fencing. And will there be changes to current parking situation or impact to daycare parking? Um, there will be no changes to daycare parking. Uh, we will be impacting part of their driveway apron. So there may be some very short temporary impacts, but we'll give notice and it will be, should be pretty quick at less than a, a day at a time or something like that. Um, parking, there will not be enough room to do front end parking like there was before at times that were angled parking. Uh, we will still have parallel parking along this curb line, plus the ADA parking right here, uh, considering this is in a high density area with lots of pedestrian traffic uh, in the future. We think that's consistent with um, the plans for the neighborhood. Uh, square footage of the existing pump station and park. Um, existing park was 0.12 acres, existing pump station 0.32 acres, and the new combined area is 0.34 acres. So more park area, a little less pump station. Uh, I think I talked about the, the circular pathway. Um, good for ADA access, good for maintenance vehicles, um, good for viewing art in the future, different art installations, and, and maybe kids want to ride their tricycles around and that kind of thing. Um, and then could the park area be sold to private development in the future? Uh, that is very unlikely, although I can't you know, predict the future. Uh, it's very unlikely, especially after we have built uh, all this infrastructure on site. I, I think this will be in city hands for a very long time. Um, it's a multi-million dollar investment. Uh, and then the other thing I can say is I know that the parks department and city manager's office, uh, they know how valuable public place is, especially in these high density areas. So they are more of the, the mind of trying to obtain new parkland than, than giving it away. So unlikely, I believe. Uh, and then the landscape plan, uh, is it final? And it is at a 90% design. We have one more round of review to go with the grounds maintenance and the parks department. Um, if you have any preferences or wishes about what kind of trees you like to see, please email me um, and we will include that for discussion uh, and in our final design review. And I think that's all I have for questions. See if we have anything in the chat room. Doesn't look like it. And I think that if we don't have any other questions, I think we can uh, end the meeting. We have four participants. Okay. Well, there you go. Thank you so much for coming. And thank you to Cameron and Talia for showing up and being support and uh, being ready to answer additional questions that came through. And, uh, and again, thank you, thank you for coming. And please, uh, you know, excuse me, let me go to the last slide. There's my contact information, zevans at shorelinewa.gov and my phone number. Okay, thank you very much, Tali. You can end it whenever you're ready.